what is dark and what is light quite opposite to each other one doesn't has any meaning if the other loses its own now there is a place far high up on the himalayas next to tibet which host india's first star sky resort there in the extreme darkness surprisingly you will find the whole cosmos stars galaxies they are light and that's on This is the story of our journey to the stars. Before the end of 2022, Ladakh is set to become the first dark sky resort of the country. We are going on a quest to the middle of nowhere. It is so nowhere that scientists are going to do experiments of Mars and Moon. Hey there, I am Astro Roxy. And in this video I am sharing my journey to one of the world's highest observatory and how it's able to solve universe's biggest mystery. Let's start to Hanle where the secrets lie. Our destination Hanle Ladakh lies north of the Great Himalayas 4500 feet above the sea level. surrounded by mountain ranges in all directions which by the way were formed by the glacial activity during the last ice age but why are we in the middle of mountains again you see monsoon summer cyclone winter cyclone they all diminish the number of sparkling stars we can see in our country the high altitude prevents clouds from covering the horizon and the result is clear dark night skies for all year round comparable with sites like mauna kea in hawaii and atacama desert in chile but first acclimatization if you go to high altitude too quickly your body is not able to adapt to the lack of oxygen supply so after popping a white pill known as timox and a days worth of rest to prevent us from altitude sickness we set out to the astronomers paradise started our journey from the le airport we hired a cab to cover the distance of 250 kilometers between the le airport and the hanle observatory our local driver and tourist guide dai was an adventurous guy abhi gane se samne se aa raha tha bike pe aa raha tha yahan pe na to market mein wo samne se bike aa raha tha abhi sangam wahan baith ke photo lena okay maine se dekha wo half jacket pe tha na thodi badi acha hai na हाँ ये तो स्मार्ट बंदा है कोई बाइक ले कर रहा है उसको बताया देखो इतना स्मार्ट ऐसे आ रहा था सामने आते आते ऐसे चला गया पहचान में नहीं आया बोला कोई सलमान खान है सलमान खान है विद चाइनी हेयर कट एंड ही डज नॉट फील द गोल्ड एट ऑल ही स्माइल्ड एट एवरीवन सेइंग जुले व्हिच मींस हेलो द ब्रेथ टेकिंग यू मेक्स यू वांट टू सिट फॉर इंफिनिटी योर रिस्पेक्टिव of the freezing wind in an attempt to capture the vastness you see in front of you the higher we went the more barren everything got no trees for kilometers the cold desert terrain is harsh for life as we know it but this is what gives rights to its uncanny similarity to the red planet scientists suggest that martian lakes before they dried up were similar to the present day ladakh lakes If this is possible here then the existence of life beyond earth appears endless After a rigorous journey of 8 hours we were finally at the summit of Mount Saraswati just before the sunset and saw the giant eyes of the cosmos with our eyes
I still remember the first night I spent near the observatory. The sky looked like tiny diamonds filled on an everlasting black canvas. The star-studded Milky Way was rising from behind the observatory. I saw its star clusters and nebulae and the first thing I recognized was Orion the Hunter chasing down the seven sisters which were immersed in a faint blue halo. It is said that on a clear night sky in the summer months when the Milky Way is on the top we can see its core, we will be able to see our own shadow not because of the sun, any street lights, any moon, any planets, no. Just with the brightness of all the stars, you can see your shadow. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that an astronomer's paradise? The first telescope to be set up was Himalayan Chandra Telescope, named after Indian astrophysicist and Nobel laureate Dr. Subramanian Chandrasekhar. It's a two-meter telescope that works both in visible and infrared. As you can see, these are the wavelengths that can penetrate our atmosphere. Now, this telescope can work in temperatures below zero, but the astronomers who need the data, they don't have to work in such challenging conditions because the telescope can be remotely operated from thousands of kilometers away in Crest, Bangalore, thanks to a dedicated satellite link. The IAEA searched many other sites in uh, sub Himalayan range of uh, Kedarnath, Badrinath, and uh, Dalhousie, and uh, this uh, Spiti Valley, and all. But finally, Ladakh uh, in Hanle was selected for the detailed site characterization. So there was a team made by IAEA and we, I was also a team member of six, seven people. So slowly, slowly the team members, which were from South, they started disappearing after two, three months. When I was alone, our people told you select one your colleague, local engineer. So I selected that person, uh, Dorje. So 1998, so I gave him all training in astronomy and all initially. So we two were there. Slowly other people also join. So if you are allotted two nights on a telescope, so you need 10 days because you have to acclimatize two days in, three days in lay travel and then come to Henley. Henley also immediately cannot take work next day. So then going back. So it was thought that why not make this telescope? By that time, this communication technology also have come up, networking and all. So it was thought that um, its remote operation may be made from Bangalore, Hauskote campus. So those things all infrastructure came and instrument also commissioned. And finally, from May 2003, it took almost three years for final commissioning and giving it to the nation. Can you guess where I am? I am at the Indian Astronomical Observatory and their control room. So as you can see all around me, there are different, different types of computer over here too many wires and too many things going on. And we have one person to help us out to understand how the Himalayan Chandra telescope is able to capture what it's able to capture. So I have Kunga String, sir, with me. So how are you doing, sir? I'm taking flat here. Flat here? Yeah. And the sky condition is taking me. Sky condition is taking me. The sky condition is taking me. क्रिएट very high energy particles. These particles travel faster than the speed of light, not in vacuum, just in air, in the atmosphere. And they emit a eerie blue light. 
and this flash of light is also known as Cherenkov radiation. The honeycomb shaped mirrors of maze will capture these short lived flashes of light. This will allow astronomers to trace back each gamma ray source back to its cosmic origin. Was it the death of a massive star, a gamma ray burst, or maybe a book from a center of active galaxy, or a rapidly spinning pulsar, or maybe the dark matter, the enigmatic dark matter was behind it all? We will finally have an answer. The Indian Astronomical Observatory has more than just these two telescopes. And there's also news that a new telescope will be set up by ISRO soon in the near future. The facilities by the Indian Space Research Organization coming up in the next few years. And we also expect to set up a larger optical uh, infrared telescope um, uh, in the one of the higher peaks um, or higher location in the same mountain. Yeah, Hanley is uh, why you can say monsoon uh, bound uh, because uh, western disturbance whenever it comes everything falls on Srinagar, uh, Kagin, Zujila etc and light cloud passes while as when the southeast monsoon comes everything falls in uh, all the deposit gets on uh, Himachal, Uttarakhand etc and then we get lighter clouds which can cross the Himalayas and uh, visit us so uh, with that fact uh, uh, this is actually we get around like uh, 180 total uh, cloud free nights and observable is like uh, we have like 270 nights in a year. So this was the story of Ladakh. How the land of nothing actually becomes the land of every possible human question. Not just scientific but something that is at the very core of human emotion. That is exploration. Finding the stars where there's no light finding oneself by becoming truly lost. The dichotomy of the cosmos showing us maybe our eventual fate as a species, which is traveling back to the stars. Now, with Ladakh becoming India's first dark sky reserve location, traveling to the observatory will be easier than ever before because dark sky reserves promote astro tourism. Let me know in the comments if you also wish to travel there, what do you want to do there, what do you want to see in the sky, everything in the comments below. Our quest to Ladakh would not have been anything like this if it wasn't for the people who were with us in the terrain, who have lived there for centuries and beyond, the locals. And I also want to thank the CISF and BRO. Special thanks to Dor Janchuk, who is the torch bearer of Hanle Observatory. Kunga Sering, who is the on-ground operator of Himalayan Chandra Telescope since decades. Sevan Stenzin, who is identifying asteroid among billions of other stars in Hanley. Rene Anchuk, who is building the most sophisticated gamma ray telescope the Northern Hemisphere has ever seen. Rakesh Rao, who is bringing stories to life from the edges of astronomical pursuits. Also, our very own comrade of the journey, Dai, who shared many quirky tales and drove us to the land of high passes safely, even in the freaking midnight across lake. Julie!